Hi everyone, this is Matt with The Grappling Podcast, and in today's episode, we dive into submission systems, what they are, and we also give a few options on how to build your own. By the way, if the audio sounds a bit off on this podcast, that's because we were experimenting with some different software, and we ultimately decided not to go with it in the long run. So don't worry, next episode we should be back to our normal dashing voices. So without further ado, here's our podcast on submission systems. We hope you enjoy. All right, and we're live. I think we're going to need to get some more accoutrements for the table. I know. (laughs) You've got a lot. You've got some Dungeons and Dragons stuff over there. A couple things. My friend Jeffrey Lem 3D printed this insane skull. Isn't that crazy? That is sweet. This is like one of those 3D prints where it just goes like layer by layer. Oh. All the way up. Yeah. Which I like a lot. But as you can see a little bit, like you can see all these little lines yeah apparently you gotta use acetone or something on that there's a trick to smoothing oh, like, this it out a little bit? yeah you want to look it up though i've never done it my brother was just telling me about it i think are these big ones I don't know what you can see um i have his this one is really smooth like you can't really see too Whoa. much you have to really look close that's crazy yeah so i'm not sure what the don't you did you get a fancy 3d printer so this is the same uh same i guess I did get one, but it's just taken them time to like do, like you said, to have like all the levels set and to have a you know good solid print. I made like a Batman and a Wonder Woman once. Oh, okay, um, but it's just having time to kind of mess around with the the uh, machine itself. But I would love to get into three D printing more. I I really wanted to do Dungeons and Dragons figurines, but uh, the problem was when they're small like that, it's re- like the lines are very noticeable. Mm. Like. I could pull one out right now that uh, uh, Lem had done, and it like when he does a three D printer, that's like the dip one. Okay, it's like you're dipping into material. It has a little bit more of a chemical thing that you have to mess with, but like the final product is like someone took a rock, like it's yeah, part of a rock. Like it looks perfect. You were showing me that like setup. Yeah, that was really cool. And then he's got like he's made bigger ones, like a angel, like ASMR wings, and it just looks it looks phenomenal. But it's me getting confidence deal with all the chemicals and such. This just acts like a printer. This just acts like you go zzz, 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 Yeah, my daughter, all the way up. she's like, got one of those. I've been trying to get, figure it out. Like some stuff is kind of funky to get like uh, shapes and stuff. Like you have to have it laying right or else yeah. the nozzle will hit it. And if anybody listening is actually like really good at 3D printing, you they're probably just like yelling at us right now. Oh, you're grabbing that guy. Podcast too for uh, the, Dungeons and Dragons, obviously. But like, oh yeah, so was he three D printed? No, so that is something uh, I got from the store. Okay, so but that's the idea that you could three D print this material, and then when it gets big enough, because that's Tiamat. But if you get big enough, it basically prints in pieces. Okay, I think maybe you can see a little bit here, but you basically the way that's printed, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Like you put it into place, um, but there's massive ones. Like I had it where you can change the size of it. So you print this big, massive piece, massive piece, massive piece. Like people have done that with a, a Halo, like Master Chief armor. Oh, or that's not cool. Master Chief, I'm thinking. Oh, I guess Master Chief, but uh, like Iron Man. They're oh. 3D printed parts and then paint it and all that fun stuff. But you just have to do it piece by piece and then you make some pretty big build versus the skull. I think it was, it was just one. Okay. It just went all the way up and they take off all the little extra pieces and support beams and stuff. But that's wicked. Someday I'll get back into it. But I wanted the print first, so I have a good print. And then once I had a good print system going, uh, then getting into painting. Okay. Because I have this visual I want to do of like, I saw an amazing Ghost Rider 3D print. Okay. With all the wheels and flames and fires. And I'm like, that'd be amazing to print it and then like take time to paint it. It's funny how different we are with this stuff. <laughs> What's that? Because I'm like thinking like straight utilitarian when it comes to like the 3D printer, well, too. There's, there's I make like ones. hangers and like uh, like different things to like couple things, like you know, connecting so of things, these grouping of things. Are good for that, like you can uh, make all the like. Yeah, I made like headphone holders and some yeah. other little things like that. Oh, there's ones where like this one where you can like have a extendable sword. Yes, I've you seen videos of those. Those are pretty cool. What's yeah. amazing that it it prints as the 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 whole like the whole piece with all the pieces in it and you're like really and then you take it and it like perfectly fits in place oh yeah it makes sense i bet you it probably does it vertically yeah because then you can just sit them in there yeah and then it just goes on 
So cool. I wonder if you need like a really nice nozzle for that. I think that's all the setup stuff for it. Because right? yeah, I was gonna say like that thing yeah. is legit. Like I didn't realize it was 3D printed until you just told me about it. And yeah. then I could see really close on the smaller stuff. But the bigger things, it's just like wow, like that thing's got some serious detail to it. Yeah, like it's well said, well calibrated. Stuff. Well, think about all the stuff on like Etsy and whatnot of uh people can just 3D print things themselves and then just sell it to the masses. You know, like how cool is that? It's kind of funny. It's almost like uh the different uh, like visual AI tools out there now mm-hmm. is the same as a 3D printer for mm-hmm. like a, a picture. Yeah, you know that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, so, poor comic book artists, but I'm gonna call out my girlfriend right now. Okay, so we had. A oh, first... she doesn't like it when you call her girlfriend. <laughs> oh, but my my partner, girlfriend sounds. Uh, but we had a 30 minute conversation, and almost a joke because she uh, she she's notorious for like singing the wrong lyrics and songs oh but she'll do it with confidence oh that's cool so <laughs> it was like a uh, vin- vanilla ice song ice ice baby dun, 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 dun. okay yeah and uh she had like flow like a hawkoon hawkoon Hawk yeah daily and nightly and i was like a hawkoon a hawkoon <laughs> hawkoon and I was like, I like it. So either we need a sticker for this, a hawk coon. Yeah, so it's either a, a hawk raccoon merge. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking in my or, head right here. Or she thought it was like a harpoon. Like a flow like yeah. a, So the I think the lyrics is that it's flow like a harpoon. Oh, I actually don't even know the lyrics. Yeah, so we had to look it up. So it's flow like a harpoon. Really? So that's what like they picked. Harpoon. Hawkoon. And then so I had to make uh, AI, like, I need a hawkoon. I need like you Did you make, do that? Yeah. So oh I, my goodness. So I was like, I need a representation of like a can, can you put this up on the screen for the viewers yeah, so they end up so they can see yeah. it? Yeah. So it was like Oh, that's awesome. Having like a hawk boom. Okay. We'll have to we'll have to put that on the screen for people later. Yeah. Harkoon. But the, the thing was I did not uh I did not specify the first one, so it was this. So I made a hawk <laughs> All right. So it was like a I would say you should like, can you actually put it on the screen later? Oh, on the screen. Maybe I can do that. Yeah. That'll probably be cool. Then I I tried to get (laughs) harpoon and like it didn't really do well. And then I had to. I thought the harpoon was great. But this is kind of cool. So it's like. Oh, that is cool. Hawk themed. Harpoon thing. I like the first one more. That one's awesome. It's just amazing with the technology these days where it's like you can just make it so that like you can just type in whatever you want. Yeah. And it just. Does it? I actually just had a crazy thought the other night. Woke yeah. up in the middle of the night. Okay. Important thought. So what about this? In video games like Baldur's Gate, mm-hmm. eventually they'll have just like a voice recognition key that you read. And now the character has your voice and answers in your voice. 100%. That's not far off. That no, can't be. That can't gonna, be far off. It's going to be a calibration thing. I'm sure it's going to be like a privacy thing. Like, hey, you accept that. You know, maybe it's like we'll delete it or whatever kind of says but you, you'll say like maybe two sentences if you're leaving your house or putting things online like i, th- I feel like it's just it's out there now want something cool though you can have it in your voice that would just be amazing wouldn't that be crazy so I, i've been messing actually this morning uh there's a website called 11 labs ai okay and they do realistic ai voices like it makes sense to be like it should be somewhat realistic but the way that you can type it and have the same uh inflections and pacing as like a human like it's not like i i am very jujitsu like it's it doesn't sound like robotic well, it's just like the chat gpt voice that thing is yeah. so slick but it's gotten even like it's even smoother even smoother than that like, whoa to the point where you could just like have a that was a, the videos i was sending you with uh uh kratos yeah master chief like reading yeah. stuff yeah <laughs> and it's like oh like the way that's paced it sounds like they the voice actor themselves was, was doing it so I've seen it now where people would do uh, Justice League animated and they would do like spoof videos of just images, but it sounds like perfect 85%, 90% close to like Kevin Conroy's voice and things like that. Where That's going to be so cool. Make it a joke going back and forth where I was like, wow. So it needs like five minutes of audio sample, I think, from okay. whatever it is. And then they played a couple samples and I'm like, doesn't remind you of Mission Impossible 3. Oh, yeah. And they like sneak into the bathroom. They knock the bad guy over and they're like, yes. Yeah. And he's just like, how now, brown cow? The yeah. cat. You know, like he's got these, these random things. And then it was like encrypting, encrypting, encrypting. Oh, we're close to that for sure. That's crazy. But the problem is like I saw a, face, a Facebook ad that was uh, something talking about making better pictures for AI. And it was like, you could tell it was like Tom Cruise's voice. Oh. Like without it saying it, I was like. Well, it's That's like if you wild. had Morgan Freeman for a voice, you'd be like, 
Yeah. Uh, I don't think he sponsors your 12. IP is going to get weird, right? <laughs> like they're going to have like, there's going to be a lawsuit at some point of using somebody's voice for something. Yeah. There was something now where some of these images that are created by chat GPT and these other ones are going to have in their meta information that it was created. By okay. It. So it's not like it would stop you putting on your Instagram or whatever, but uh, they were saying in like one to two years, there's going to be like more of a in your face of detecting and showing and labeling things on social media or whatever, saying this was created by mm. AI, like enough detection so that instead of making you sound smarter or thinking like people created something there, it's just going to be like everything's going to be labeled or detected as like AI generated. So I'm not sure. I mean, it, it helps in some ways, but I think it's just going to show people that, you know, that that was uh, assisted. I just, I don't know. I, I have such a different opinion about that because can you imagine if like you researched a paper and you use Google to get all these things and to give you the information. And then you're like, well, this report was sponsored by Google. Like I had to look up in a book. It's like, you got to look it up in a book. Mm. You couldn't ask someone and that you had to ask someone like, why did you intuitively know it? It's like, these are all like tools I think that should help people yeah you know, it without always, stealing it i should say it comes down to how do you design an activity to help people learn that can't be just exploited right. you know negatively because like i think using ai as a tool to learn is a really good idea yeah it's awesome you have essentially a tutor in your pocket but the tricky part comes into there's some things you intentionally shouldn't use ai for yeah. to increase your skill mm -hmm. right so like uh writing you should like if you're writing something like creative writing or doing some type of article or something like that, you should write it yourself because writing it help you think. I It'll help that. you be yeah, it help you be a better communicator, at yeah. least in the written word. And so it's it's against your own best interest where I almost wonder there's gonna be this like bubbling up of people who got jobs because they AI really well. Sure. But then when it comes down to like them presenting something or just being on around it. A table discussing things there's a difference between someone who knows a topic so well that it's just like honestly yeah, i could teach this i just need a flip chart to help you learn it mm -hmm. versus um let me see what chat gpt said right you're essentially just a conduit to this technology right so i think that's the tricky part where you have to draw the line in the sand for yourself i saw two jujitsu uh oh good players. we're getting to jujitsu now well this will this will cross over well so did you see that latest technology piece from apple it's like apple vision pro I haven't seen like how it works, but I get the idea. So there's like people like it's augmented little, reality. Yes, yeah, so people walk around and you know they'd be in the living room, there'd be a big screen and all this cool stuff. Yeah, uh, you could like see like a nav point. Someone had a really funny one where they went in the bathroom and sat in the toilet, and somehow the AI could like get like you know see your hands and like basically take them, they, like disappear in the background. Okay, so you're like on a mountaintop. Or like at a beach. <laughs> and it reminded me of that Rick and Morty episode where he has like the toilet and like the serene oh, yeah. like waterfall place. It's like pretty soon you're like, oh, it's not just some weird bathroom. Like now I'm in some mystical planet or something like that. I just thought it was absolutely hilarious. But it was uh, two jiu-jitsu players. And one of them had like the, the uh, glasses on or whatever. And, you know, they're rolling. And it just showed from their viewpoint. But can you imagine... Uh, what was that movie? Was place, it Civil War? Place hand here. Yeah, well, like Civil War where... Uh, Iron Man and Captain America. Well, they were fighting. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, uh, it wasn't Jarvis. It was whatever the other AI. Vision. No, right? no, no. It was uh, whatever was the audio. Oh. That um, was like detecting his movements. and so trying Monday to or Friday. So Friday, day of the I week, think. isn't yeah. it? But it was like like reading his movements and trying to like basically outmatch him because he's reading the movements. Like imagine having something like that. Where it's like almost becomes this video game where it's like tracking. Well, it's gonna be like Neuralink stuff, yeah. right? Which I, it's a cool idea, but honestly, I'm a little resistant to it. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of just lame like that. That's where we're like cyborg fighting now. Yeah. I'm either gonna go full cyborg or not, not partial cyborg. I mean, right. in or out. I think Elon Musk said uh, we're basically all cyborgs, but it's like on the outside. Yeah. It's like true. We're like holding, we're holding it versus it being like in our body or in our mind. Yeah, that's true. So imagine now in Jiu-Jitsu, if you had something where it was like uh, Neo from the Matrix of like, you're just, I guarantee you if, if humanity goes oh, yeah. long enough, there's going to be like a website or a program where you can download information. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. But like, isn't that, you want to learn Jiu-Jitsu? You know what's boring about that, though? The pursuit is the fun part. There's no destination in this. It's just so, the pursuit of it. So if you had like. See, it, the problem had, is it's a cheat code and it makes the game not fun anymore. If you had to pay $10,000. 
but you could like have like the swordsman skills of like Musashi and it would just be like instinctual in you. Would you would you pay ten thousand dollars to have that? If you had a pretty decent amount of cash to spend, like let's say you had ten thousand dollars to just spend on something. I wouldn't spend it on that. Would you spend it on I would spend it on like boring administrative stuff. Uh, and I would leave like the fun development stuff for my own spirit. Sure. I guess that's a good way of putting so, it. So like I would try to be like, can you download like a dictionary, a thesaurus, and oh, all the encyclopedia Britannica's uh, into my skull. So that way I'm just like, oh yeah, where's, you know, what's the capital of Turkey? I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, it's this. Just, I would just be like, a re- use it as a reference tool. I would definitely pay, te- I would pay $10,000 for that. Matt isn't actually smart. He's, yeah, he's I just, had a newer link. Yeah. <laughs> like, darn it. <laughs> yeah, I'd be, I'd be fine with it. That's way too funny. All right, everyone. So today we're trying out a couple things. First, we're on video. This is our first video episode besides um one that levi and i did levy and i did sorry correct myself uh levy and i did on uh the the um uh, we did it like online so this is actually our technically our second video episode but this Mm -hmm. is our first one at the table at the studio by the way I, i was thinking about this we should start saying that this podcast currently is sponsored by theory grappling studio one why not two we're actually here so thank you to you the know that, uh, that, you know, to the owners of Theory Grappling Studio who that's that's know. the name that's going to change to Matt. Why what? Are you saying Grappling Studio? Theory Grappling Studio. Oh, it's Jujitsu <laughs> Studio. Sorry, sorry. But I like how he says that because I I feel that that's that's the eventual name change that's going to happen. No, it's going to be Grappling Studio. I'm just going to start. I'm going to keep going with that until it catches on. It also makes more sense. Uh, well, it makes sense because we're we're more than just Jujitsu, which is very important. But the wrestling and all that stuff is, is a good sense of it. It also helps a lot when people are like, typing things yeah, and searching jiu-jitsu. things. It's a little hard. Jiu-jitsu sounds like you sneezed. Versus, <laughs> versus, oh, yeah. Versus, is it the I-U or U-I? Yeah. You know? so it makes it, little, it yeah. makes it a little more complicated versus theory grappling. I like that. You know, it just makes it a little easier. So People know what grappling is. Yeah, it makes it a little easier. So that was some good banter. I hope everyone enjoyed it. We're 16 minutes into the episode. And if you'd like more banter, yeah, let, us, let us know and we will be speak the banter. So the topic today is actually on submission systems. And uh, Levi threw this idea out, and I think it's actually a really good idea because it it's easy to use the word systems and process and procedure and essentially all these other words that you can, you know, it's essentially a series of steps or actions taken to achieve a specific result. Correct. But when we actually break down, like, what does that mean within the context of grappling, right? Like, what is a grappling system, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah, there's a lot of systems as far as, like, how you run a class, how you, you know, structure your training, how you, you know, like, all those different types of things. Uh, but then grappling gets even more complicated in a good way in that there's a lot of different ways to express the art. Um, so, yeah. So, I thought that was a, a really cool topic. And the way I think about grappling systems in large is it's a process of like if that then this statements mm-hmm. it's pretty much like the i think a way to kind of so would that be like a programming would that be a decision tree versus i i think for some reason i start getting confused between a decision tree and a flow chart well it's all the same thing is it the same thing yeah, i okay. think so decision and tree sounds i am actually a black belt in lean six sigma <laughs> it's the only black belt i got i would say that uh Submission systems or systems has been kind of a popularized word in Jiu-Jitsu as of like 2018, let's put it that way, somewhere around there, where John Donaher was putting that out for his leg locks. Yeah. Like the leg locks. I got to finish that one. And it's like, before that, I think a lot of instructionals and people talking were just saying how to get better at certain things to say like, here's how to get better at arm locks. Here's how to get better at chokes. Like it was just kind of like this. Uh, more like technical details of the movement itself or escapes. But this was the first time someone articulated the fact, and I apologize if other people have the same system. This is the first time it's popularized of saying like, here's a system, systemized process of how you start and how you eventually can get deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole to eventually uh, get higher, higher chances for submissions or positional advancements. I have a, oh, I have a, a good, uh, I kind of, thought experiment we can do Mm. that would be helpful for our listeners for those who are trying to understand like what a system is yes okay so we're talking about if this then the that uh kind of flow charty kind of you do this then this then this kind of thing okay if your opponent is doing nothing you walk behind them and you do a rear naked choke that would be essentially like lowest yeah that would be like the lowest like uh 
resistant resistance that's not the version the, of the lowest is that they just stick your their head into your arms and then you just squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If they're sticking their head in your arms. Here you go. But yeah. if you're just starting and they're literally just standing there like a like an NPC, yeah. that's what you do, right? Mm -hmm. So then the conversation turns to, well, they're not going to do that. And you're like, absolutely. They're not going to let you do that. So then what do you do? Like, well, what's their first response probably going to be? Well, it's going to be mm -hmm. one of like 10 to 20 things. Yeah. And then what the idea is that you have responses for those 10 to 20 things that funnel you to get to that end point that you wanted anyways. Yeah. But, you know, you're just going to have some bumps along the road versus being able just to walk there behind them and, you know, sink in every naked choke. So I think there's two different ways that people can approach jujitsu uh, when you're uh, competing against someone. The first one is the visual I have is kind of like a river down a mountain. And the idea is that it never looks the same way twice. Maybe by playing Plinko and Price is Right. Oh, yeah, there you go. It just kind of goes down. And I say that because any resistance that's met, you can kind of redirect, right? Mm. So it's like if I'm I like that. That's a good trying visual. to do something and you resist, I'll just go around your resistance. Okay. Like I'll kind of flank it. But the problem with that in the relation to a system and a submission system is that, like, let's say I'm going for a Kimura and you defend. And I go, well, I'm going to take your back instead. The problem with that is that it works well in the advancement of generalized jujitsu, but it doesn't work in your pursuit of getting a shoulder lock or a Kimura. Mm. So I think when Matt and I are talking about submission systems, it's the fact that you're trying to carve a specific pathway and a set of reactions to get this submission. You're not okay if you get into a triangle choke and they defend and you go, well, I'll go to the Oma Plata or I'll go to their legs. Unless that's the system you're working. Unless that's something that that is going towards you know, a specific yeah. spot. Sometimes I think in jiu-jitsu... If you have a triangle game, that's very reasonable to assume that you'd have own platas to well, funnel off of that. The idea, though, is like anytime you're coming off of it, I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself, that kind of stuff is like the last tier of the system. Because if everything fails, and I'll, I'll get to this right away, might as well. If everything fails of, let's say, you going for a triangle choke, uh, I love Gordon Ryan's visual of this, and it said, the weakest part of one system connects to the strongest part of another system. I like that. So let's say you posture up from a triangle choke and you're like, there's no more angles, no more posture, everything sucks. The upper body now is going away from you and it makes it easier now for you to enter into leg locks. So now you're going to K-guard entries and things like that. So it's like if everything messed up and screwed up, you can at least go to the strong spot of another submission system. We should pause on that for a second. Yeah, because yeah, honestly, no, think like, like listeners, like think about it for a moment because if you're so dead set on getting say one submission, say you want to get a rear naked choke, mm -hmm. we'll use that because it's got a long path to get there sometimes. Yeah, long, you know. The fact that you might end up in a spot where like the Kimura is right in front of you or, you know, or just some other submission. Mm -hmm. It's like, why would you like, like you should jump into that other system then of working that movement. Mm -hmm. Because why, like, why give up the A plus opportunity to keep fighting for the thing that's not even there anymore? Yeah, or it might be very far away. Well, and that's like a middle ground decision too. Because I'll, when I was thinking about uh, sort of explaining the submission system, I think triangles are a really good one to explain this because they're not exactly a dominant position. Ooh, good you're call. you're in guard and kind of this middle spot where you could start sweeping or back takes or other submissions. So there's a lot of other candy there for you to go towards. Uh, my good friend, uh, Kevin Regner in Grayson, Milwaukee is really great at triangles. And part of the stuff that freaks me out with it is the fact that he's not giving anything up besides doing that triangle choke. Oh, wow. And that's, that's the scariest thing. That's a serious triangle game. Well, say, I always feel like I'm just giving up the position. I say that because a very common response when uh, people are in triangle chokes is they'll hug the endangered arm. Or sorry, they'll the endangered arm that's on the inside will hug that leg thinking that arm across is necessary for the triangle finish. It's not necessary, but a lot of people will respond. Well, a very tempting response then instead of pursuing the triangle choke is to go for the omoplata. Uh, this is actually what Gary Tonin talks about. He says, bait the omoplata because it's much easier to get out of an omoplata than it is a triangle choke. <laughs> it's like, let, the, let them think that this is what, you know, they should be going for. And now you're one step ahead of the game. Triangle escapes are very like raw. You're just like, yeah, there's a, there's a grindy thing. Yeah. Even it's, like the, the best escapes, 
you know? So I say that because uh, when someone has at the point where they are hugging your leg, you do have two options. One is either sit there and just convert to an omoplata. But the second one uh, that I actually see Donahue use is he switches the triangle choke leg and use that to pry off the arm with either like a Kimura style pressure um, or pops it off and then switches back to the triangle choke. You show me that one. Yeah. So for me, those are two core examples to say when you're at a spot where you're like, maybe I'll, I'll switch and move on. You can either do that. Or if, if for me, if I'm working on a submission system, it's everything that's leading towards that specific submission. And that involves overcoming the most common counters to that submission. So for example, if you're going for arm locks, very common people are going to lock their hands, you know, or try to elbow escape or whatever. You have to have things prepped for those situations. You have to have either things prepped to say this might happen. And instead of, you know, someone escaping and leaving and you switching to their back control, how do you go, I'm going to stop this and still stay in the same position. So to me, when I, when I think about a specific submission system, the whole fact of saying, I know I can take the back right now, but right now I'm hunting triangle chokes. You're hunting that like perfection of people freaking out from your triangle choke. Mm. Uh, Don Arthur has it where it's like, there's a type A and type B of triangle chokes. Um, it's like front side and rear. Like they all kind of like, one together. of the triangle chokes is really assertive and really yeah. dominant. And the other tri triangle choke is kind of more laid back and stuff, right? Like so you got a type A, right? type A triangle chokes and type B triangle chokes. Yeah. That's the, the relationships. Work yeah. really well. But like you could, like people talk about triangle chokes, arm bars, and whole plots, like how they kind of like work together. There are things like that that work very well together. But even switching from one type of triangle choke to another triangle choke, to me, still stays within the same system as it were. I think that's fair. It's very similar to leg locks. like. If you defend a leg lock, I'm not abandoning everything and going for a guard pass. I'm transitioning to another leg lock. So the goal, much like regular jiu-jitsu, is to get them to a point where there's not many other options left except tapping at that point. I like it. You know, it's almost like uh, I'm trying to think of another way to explain this. And it's a, a logical way. It'd be like it's like climbing a rock wall. You're taking a path, depending on the path in front of you you're going to, it's going to dictate like how you climb, right? Cause you don't just climb straight up. Usually you kind of have a visual path as you're getting there. You might find that, Ooh, that I can't take that path. I need to take a different path, sure. but you're still trying to advance up the wall mm -hmm. and you're also not trying to trying to fall down the wall, right? You're not trying to you're, give up your position. You could say, um, that's kind of the way I like to think about systems as well. Mm -hmm. So you're essentially placing rocks when you're building a system, you have a, a blank wall in front of you yeah. and you want to get to the top and you start building paths. But here's the thing. Your opponent gets a say in putting like so where these rocks go a little Which bit, sucks. you know, <laughs> so then you have to end up coming up with some movements and things like that that kind of work. So that was just kind of like a metherical way, well, I guess. And sometimes to think about it. the obstacles being there, this is where I'm saying that you could jump ship to another system if you want to. But it's like there are ways to just there's sometimes you could overcome that obstacle and keep staying in the same system versus seeing any resistance and then moving on to the next system. So I, I think people who are true masters of their uh, system will be very good at overcoming those obstacles, unless it's like that obstacle, that person has practiced very well. And it's like, wow, this is a solid the micro details defense to this move. And I have to move on. Which is really saying something because counter punching in jujitsu does not work very good. It's it's not a good system. It's not a good yeah. way to be a a grappler, you can do it when you're more skilled than your opponent or right. more athletic and stuff like that. Or if you're just letting your teammates practice, which is awesome too. Mm -hmm. But there is a, yeah, there's something to be said about, okay, now that I'm inside control, I'm going to launch my offense. Unless yeah. you've got a killer buggy choke, man, you better, you better rethink your process the there, too. you know? And I think a lot of times when people are counter punching, uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it doesn't really end up too well. Sometimes it's fun to hit trick things to let people know things were there. Yeah, uh, or if you're just goofing. You boot goofing. Did you get that reference? No. no. That was from a Reno 911. Yeah, oh, wait, wait. Yeah, that's when he gets his shark yeah. skin boots. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yep, yep, yep. And my favorite part was the... When he comes back out to his bike. Like, I love that part. Oh, the my God. Point. And they're like, look at the fuse bike. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's funny. We've never talked about this, and that's like one of my favorite scenes yeah. in yeah. Reno 911. Like, oh, God. Like, I they, love that. the production team had to do a lot to get that bike like in there so it just made him all confused i'm like why is this like on the pole <laughs> he's like oh god up. so okay 
audience, you're going to have to look that up. New boot goofin. I remember it now because Officer Dangle says it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's just like a, a thing that happens in there that is really funny. <laughs> that show is actually really good. I don't know where that, that came from. New Let's boot see. goofin. But if you're, if you're new boot goofing with people and playing around, sometimes it's fun just the creative side of it mm -hmm. to, to go off the beaten path with those things. But I think a yeah. lot of times. But if I roll this way, because sometimes you find a gem. Yeah. Well, I think. What I like about the systemized process of it is that it gives people uh, a lot greater chance of success when they're actually trying to go toe to toe with somebody else. Because uh, usually the the way things happen, especially as a white belt or even early blue belt, is saying, "Here's an armbar. I'm gonna go for this armbar." And the person on the bottom goes, "Ugh, I know what armbar is." So they're just gonna pull it into their chest, and then they're just fighting resistance back and forth, back and forth until maybe it gives, maybe it defends, and either which one are just frustrated. The problem is that it's probably probably my favorite word in jiu-jitsu, but it's it's dilemmas. It's like usually the the resistance to one thing will open up an opportunity for something else, or you can like set it where like I've always said too that that jiu-jitsu is really good for bullying mentalities because all you have to do is the complete opposite of what you want them to do, and they'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. So if you want them yeah. to push up on your chest, just get it nice and tight and numb, and they'll reflexively just do the exact opposite of what you're doing. To say unless like they, unless I'm, they got something sassy they're planning well it's just saying like you could kind of like if you so that's kind of good with the system too like if you want to have their arm extended pull their arm back into them and then sometimes they'll go out or if you want their arm in push it away and then they'll bring it back in nice and tight for you like you can kind of do some puppeteering a little bit and get people to funnel in towards that system and that's where people get scary like for triangle chokes like you might think you're getting swept and then you pull out your hand they shoot that leg over and you're like right it's like now you're deeper in the system and do this. And when you're like, really tired, it's so demoralizing. When you get like yeah. locked in a clothes guard or in a triangle choke and you're just exhausted. It's amazing because uh, you got locked in a clothes guard like five times. I know. Dude, did you, did you hear me? The last one, I was just like, shoot. <laughs> like, I was just like, oh, crud. Because it's just like I fell. I was being sloppy. and just I actually you know, showed uh, Natalie this morning a little bit of your match because I was trying to figure out if that guy right away was doing a jumping clothes guard on you. Because it just befuddled me that you had zero points in that whole match. Like, both of you did. I know. It was, was weird. Like, Something's weird about Kind of this. a funny first match, isn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> he, like, jumped close guard, but he almost, like, he had contact, and he fell back in the close guard. Like He pulled guard. Honestly, it didn't hurt or pulled anything. pulled guard with contacts, yeah. So, but anyways, you, you did a good job of, like, constantly negating him. Now, if... It's exhausting. If, that was the tired, if, most tired I've ever been in a role. Ever. It's so funny because I, I act like a parent sometimes in jiu-jitsu where I'll tell people, like, you're going to feel extremely tired. You're going to feel this. And it's not like people negate me, but it's funny when it's like afterwards, people take other, a look to heart. You're like, wow, it's one five, six-minute match, and I'm just sitting here sucking wind. Oh, I've been tired before. Don't worry. <laughs> like, Matt put all of his, his uh, 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 character stats and <laughs> other things instead of – yeah. You, like Actually, you, rolled, I, you rolled low stats on uh, yeah <laughs> i was gonna say if if, if i was a D, D character i put like nothing into that i i uh and i'm putting even less into it now so <laughs> but uh okay cool so i think we should talk uh kind of morph our topic a little bit here because we're at the 30 minute mark oh wow so real quick in about two minutes what systems are you working on developing for yourself right now uh Calf slicers and knee bars. <laughs> Calf slicers and knee bars. I think that's cool. They work well together. Well, it's funny because uh, I worked with Luke a little bit before, and he's like, what do you want to play with? And he's coming off a knee injury, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm just playing, playing that a little bit. Uh, but it's cool because I like systems, and this is probably another thing with systems, that you can play off back and forth. So with compressions and knee bars, they work the same way as, as flexion and extension. So if you're trying to bend – bend the limb, there's compression for knee bars, sorry, for calf slicers or compression locks. And if they beat it by extending, now they're extending their limb and now there's knee bar potentials. Very beginning process mm. of it, but I like that a lot. Sometimes the, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Torsion, that's not a good word for it. Torque, torsion, is that a word? I mean, Keep I going not, and I'll I tell get, you. I get the chip in my brain. Yeah, I was going to say, you didn't get the thesaurus chip. But like the, the heel hook, twisting, yeah, twisting. Uh, uh, well, torque is you know torque. like foot pounds of uh, force and like sh uh, shearing. Shearing, yeah. Shearing, I guess. I guess is it, uh, shearing's kind of like this, uh, right? That is shearing. That's correct. Yeah, uh, that'd be a shearing. Uh, I think tor torque, like torsion. I think that's. Not, I don't know. Right. Tell us if we're wrong, everyone. Well, to say like I don't feel like everybody gets it with knees and heel hooks, for example. Yeah. So 
not like I feel bad if I go someplace else, not someplace else, but like let's say competing with other bronze and black belts. And I'm like, okay, I get a heel hook and I set it and I, I'll just go nice and slow. But here in the studio, it's like, I think it's a little, sometimes I'm like, ah, I don't feel like setting a heel hook in too much these days. I've become soft in my old age. I just don't feel like. Well, hey, sometimes just setting it, if you have enough of like a twist and yeah. enough like tension, like that, that hurts. Tension is a good word for it. So I, I like getting more tension uh, with arm bars and heel hooks. So it's, I've, I've been focusing more on like old man strength of like holding so people can feel like, ooh, like something's here right now. Gentlemanly jujitsu. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't stop me from chokes. I still, I still a choke. <laughs> people stop me from that. But it's just... Uh, Compression locks are cool because it just, you can scale it up a little bit with intensity. It's funny. I was uh, watching the other day that Tim was rolling and Tim was looking over at me as I was just sitting on the side. And I thought it was because um, two people were kind of rolling close to him. And then he like slowly lift his hips up and then he tapped the person he was rolling with, with a, a, <laughs> with a calf crusher or a ham sandwich. And oh, he's like, nice. Like he caught it. You know, uh, I was like, what are, are you looking at me right Tim, now? Tim, if you're yeah. listening. <laughs> right on dude he like had it and also he locked it in it oh like, that's awesome oh that's so cool i like that because one of the things uh you you is, is be able to call him the deli man <laughs> a weird nickname deli, deli man, man. Some ham sandwiches uh but i like teaching moves that i can see other people that utilize and rolling it's like I've, I've been taught by a fair amount of people and it's like some things is like I think it's such a weird finesse position to get this, or maybe it's hard to get into the entry or whatever, which is why, like when we had the Craig Jones seminar within the first couple seconds of him talking about the chin tuck. Yeah. I was like, done. Yeah. That was worth the seminar for me. And it was an, (laughs) I don't, yeah, that was a cheap seminar too. But it was quickly uh, applicable in your game, like easily translated. Oh yeah. I love it too. When you don't have to like, if you don't have to sit there and study it, like the ham sandwich takes a bit of studying to yeah. be like, okay, where's their foot? Where's my leg? And, right. you know, even then, like until you do it a couple of times, you're like, okay, I think I finally got, and you'll still screw it up sometimes in the scramble. Yeah. But like that chin tuck, that was like yeah. solid, solid. It's so easy to pick up. I kind of watched the rest of it, but there was um, a Q and A that Craig Jones did. And was it, is it Joseph? Joseph? Joseph. I think it's Joseph. Joseph Chen. Sure. Yeah. Right. I know who you're talking about. Uh, I think they were in Bali or, or I think it was Bali, but they were doing a seminar there and they did an hour long Q and A and they filmed the whole thing. That's cool. I okay. wish I would have been more prepared for the one we were at because I didn't realize he was going to do a Q and A. And so I was like, uh, oh, yeah. thinking of idea, thinking, like thinking, thinking, thinking. I probably, yeah. I would have sat there and thought about it like a beforehand. I probably could have been like, oh, this is a thoughtful question. And you Luke, know. Luke did the uh, Z-lock to me from Knee Shield just before. Oh. He was on top of Knee Shield. And you got the, you were talking about the game over position. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he got it from like top knee show, which I thought was really cool. But that is cool. But yeah, I mean, he was very open to like when I was looking at some parts of the Q&A, like he gave some pretty detailed answers. That's like, cool. He didn't like write anything off too much. It was like, he was getting some good options. It was cool. He like jumped right into all, every situation, like showed his like deadlift arm bar he does from troll position. Yeah, and, that one's crazy. A couple things like that, but I don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about submission systems. So you're working yeah. on knee bars and calf slicers because they work well together. Yeah. It's a nice little yeah. combo. I mean, obviously I've been working the back a lot too, and it's more just a systemized process with that too. I mean, that's, that's just, it's not that I don't know it per se. My retention of the back has gotten better. Uh, Luke was just commenting on that before. It's nice. like, I'm trying everything and you're just staying on my back. And it's like, that's the back now for me is my measurement. Like if I really need to turn it up with someone, I don't you get to their back. I get to their back and I just do the system from, from the back. I need to work. It's actually, I had this as one of my notes that I need to work on my back control as well. I keep trying to, I keep goofing up, uh, mixing between the systems of the straight jacket and the other one. Um, I need yeah. to play around with it a little bit more because getting that foot with my long legs audience, I have the longest legs you'll ever probably see on a human being for my height. I mean, I'll just say there's a lot of female models. I'm sure that have I don't know. I, uh, I would go toe to toe. Get, get I would go toe to hip like, with them. I would go toe to hip with them for sure. Uh, oh, okay. Side side banter. Yeah. Uh, side note. Uh, what was Jill saying yesterday? Uh, Matt has the longest legs yeah, I've ever yeah, seen I think that's in a human. Was, yeah. <laughs> but it was. Uh, it was uh, you were talking about something. Oh, she was asking like if I could uh, drop her kids off at school this morning. I said, no, "You don't have to bend my arm to to do that." She goes, "Bend your arm." I'm like, yeah. She goes. 
Don't you mean like twist my arm? Yeah. I'm and like, no, bend my arm like jujitsu. Backwards. <laughs> so that's how it is in my brain. I'm like, twist my well, arm? Twist? Well, twist? Well, I said twist, but it's like, you don't have to twist my arm. Like, that's such a yeah. jujitsu. You get two phrase. Yeah, you think like twist my arm. Like, why would you be twisting somebody's arm? Like, if we have that saying, like, you don't have to twist my arm. Yeah, it's because they'd be like, uncle, you say uncle. Yeah, so it's like, I don't it's, know why it's, it's uncle. It's a jiu-jitsu phrase. It you is a jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu phrase. to somebody. Yeah. You don't have yeah. to twist my arm. You know what's... You don't have to heel hook my leg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you don't have to knee bar me to make me do this. Hold on. All right, I'll take out the trash. Uh, you know... You know, that'd be a great t-shirt. You don't have to twist my arm. Like, uh, you don't have to twist my that arm would be good. Then have like a thing. You know, um, there's another turn of phrase that like it drives me nuts, but I like everybody says turn of phrase is wrong. So it's like I'm not judging on it. What's turn of phrase. A turn of phrase. Turn like, of phrase. A turn of phrase. See, I might even be saying that wrong. <laughs> Case in like, point. Phrases like that. Like yeah, like don't have to twist my arm or anything like that. We should actually. I've messed that up plenty. Of times. You know, here's one that people say a lot, and I've probably said it too. So I'm not like hard judging I on it. I got one that mess up a lot. You go for it. People say I'm just speaking out loud and it's like the you're supposed to say i'm thinking like i'm thinking all that but people say i'm speaking out loud and you're like yeah that's how I'm speaking my that's how speaking works <laughs> you know it, it's just just kind of funny because that comes out i'm speaking out loud and then there was one actually that i've heard that was kind of funny at first i didn't like it but now i like it more yeah so instead of like hey like you're going down rabbit holes you know sure Rabbit trails is what I heard another one of. And I think that one sounds way better because rabbit holes can go just the wrong way. <laughs> We're going down rabbit holes versus rabbit trails. What would be rabbit trails? Rabbit trails, I mean, they can kind of go on the path. Like It just means the same thing. You're a really good track. But I just think it's so funnier. Like rabbit trails. Rabbit trails. Yeah, I can do it in the snow. So I, <laughs> so I apparently was messing up a phrase uh, like a fish to water, like a, like a duck to water. I think they both work. They both work because a yeah. lot of times I'll say they took it like fish. You know, school about ducks. What's that? Land, sea, and air. They can do all three. Animal. They can do all three. Well, I can do that. You no, know, it's funny. I asked my mom like, "Hey, if you could be like years ago, I was like, if you could be any animal, if you could transform, what would you pick?" And she's like, "A duck." And I was like, "What? Really? A duck?" And she's like, "Yeah, because they can walk, swim, and fly." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, that was brilliant. That was a brilliant response, mom." But uh, okay. So as we're wrapping this up, this we got. We got really off. I'll be the duck of jujitsu. I can do it duck. all. <laughs> the duck of jujitsu. Jujitsu ducks. I think about other animals that can do all three. Mm-hmm. What you're thinking? Be a bird. So you... everyone, how do you build your own system? As Levi's thinking about other ultimate animals, it really comes down to probably pick a place uh, like a submission or an endpoint that you like and that you find that you have decent success with, or you like the finishing mechanics. And then from there, start to maybe work backwards. Um, you know, you could either just start your roles and be like, how do I get there? And eventually you'll chip your way through getting to that submission if you do it long enough. Or like I said, you could also go backwards with it and kind of try to figure out like, okay, if they do this, then like, what's the, what's the last piece of resistance I'm going to get? Okay, figure out a response for that. What's the last piece of resistance before that one that I might get? Try to find a response for that. So you can go either backwards to forward or forward to backwards, but really just finding things that you enjoy that you think work well together and just give yourself time to sit within that technique system. And you'll probably actually, or I shouldn't say probably, you will come up with responses. You'll come up with things that work that don't work. You just have to be willing to really fail for a while and that's not a bad thing it's just you're just learning right um and a case in point could be i've been playing more butterfly guard lately because of my ankle injury and i've been working some different setups working some different things and some stuff has fallen apart for me some things have been working well and it's just you just got to keep trying but eventually you go okay that these options work these ones don't you add it to your system And then you might actually find that there's something just dangling right there when it comes to like a sub or something where somebody's rebuttal to your movement is actually the thing that will feed you into that next system. So you'll develop it over time. Just keep stick with something. That's like, I think honestly, the biggest way to do it is stick with something to an annoying amount of time. Like once you've entered the chasm of darkness, you're only halfway there. You got to like keep staying with it. Even when you're bored with it, stay with it a little bit and just kind of keep picking away at it and you'll come up with some good stuff. I would say if, if your heart's into it, if you're in an environment that doesn't allow you to uh, rep things off the mats or like to say like you have a class, someone teaches you techniques and you roll and you don't have someone that you can like say, Hey, I want to like kind of take extra time to work these kind of things. 
Find I, a new school. Yeah, find a new school. Exactly. That's, That's the first thing I'm you should do is find a new school. Very jiu-jitsu studio. Yeah, come to uh, Jiu Jitsu. Move here. Yes. Move here. It's a nice Great. place. Great schools. So I would say if you have, if you had, <laughs> sure, tell people to move I, down. I like it. I appreciate that. Uh, that would be quite the influence our podcast had. Like, hey, honey, we're gonna go to Appleton, Wisconsin. But what's in Appleton, Wisconsin? There, George. <laughs> Hi. Uh, <laughs> There's a grappling uh, studio there, and I listen to these two guys on the internet talk about stuff. <laughs> one of uh, Jill's, uh, in, like brother-in-laws or I don't know, I'm so random name. He he was visiting the area and he was staying in Green Bay. And this guy's been like all over the world. He's like, Green Bay is like one of the crappiest places I've ever seen. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that's going to be shots fired for some. Oh, that's okay. Green Bay is just like, it, if you know, if you know here, you know here. It's like, so I just thought it was funny where it's just like, yeah, if you're going to move here, it's oh, here. Like Appleton. I would say like Green Bay's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> I, I laugh at the statement. I'm like, you've been a lot of crazy like, places. Like, it's trust me. I've traveled a lot too. Green Bay is not bad. Green Bay is the problem is it's just a stadium. It's a stadium town. I told that to Jill. I'm like, if it, if it wasn't for the stadium, it'd be a little different. It'd be the same as here. Yeah, yeah. It's a stadium town. So people yeah. who love the Green Bay Packers, it's a great town for them. They got mm-hmm. lots of bars that are Packer themed. They like yeah. tailgating. My uh, my sister lives in Green Bay, and they like it. And yeah. but I'm. I'm definitely more of an Appleton kind of guy myself. <laughs> Appleton's got more like music and food and things like that. That's, that's true. That's, I'm more of a music food. foodie, yeah. you know, definitely foodie. I like my music. Actually, I, as I was saying music foodie, I realized I wasn't a music guy. I was a foodie. I'm just a foodie. Can we do it? Is there like a, a festival that's just food? Is there like a food most, festival? Most of them are that's festivals. called Wisconsin. I'll here. just go eat. I just show up and eat. Anyways, come train. Yeah, come, come train. here. Uh, but anyways, what I was gonna say was, if you have a school that's very competitive, you're gonna have to build um, start to end. You can't start like let's say if I want to get good at rooting oh, chokes. Oh yeah, you, you're gonna have to do a lot of work. To say I want to get good at triangle chokes. Well, it's probably gonna be difficult to start at the end and work that. That's a good point. But if you're at a school that's very uh, exploratory and creative and allows you to do it, if you have the opportunity, I'd start at the end first and then build backwards. Because if I say you, do both. Well, you can I guess you have the time. Meet I'm just middle. saying that if you if you do. I would say, if, like, we'll say any submission you want to do, like a triangle choke or a naked choke. I would say it's an easy test. Start with a triangle choke, start with a naked choke, and, and a slightly non resistant partner and see how strong your mechanics are. Like, if you don't have strong mechanics, that's a it, good point. You can get all the way to the end of your submission and be like someone who's even slightly resisting a little, and you're like, ah, I can't finish this. It's kind of an important part of, of the submission, like, if, to be able to do it. So, triangle chokes are a good one. Um, guillotines as well. It's like you have to have good mechanics to amplify it then slowly crank up the heat for resistance. And if you do it with pretty good resistance, then I think it's it's good to start building backwards. Because now, once you lock it in, you'll have confidence to be like, they're not getting all this. Like, I, I, I heat test this all it shows, the time. shows the beauty of the rear naked choke. Rear naked sure. choke is a choke that once everybody has done it like once or twice, you're like, wow, that was powerful. And on the receiving end, you're like, yeah, that was super powerful. Yeah, <laughs> like, it doesn't take, you know? There's a little minute stuff that doesn't, it's not too bad, but still. Like, as long as there's not a crazy size difference between you two, like oh, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. It, which actually shows its strength and its power, right? Yeah. Versus like some movements are yeah. a little, little tougher to, tougher to get, you know? That's true. A little more finesse to them. But that's a beautiful part. I'm sure yeah. Too. So. The speaking uh, out of it, not the uh, matrix download of it. Yes. That's kind of true. Yeah, see? see that. How boring would life be if you just had every cheat code on? It would suck. It's like what happens to me with The Sims. Like You just I, put every I, cheat code on I, and now. I played The Sims in the beginning. I'm like, oh, yeah. this is all fun and doing a career. And then it's like Rosebud and you get like whatever, dollars And I'm like, oh, it's kind of boring. Okay. Yeah. Unless you want to <laughs> just design houses, which That's is true for about a day. Which, which is why <laughs> my, my ex-wife would only buy it to build houses. That's why that, well, Minecraft is fun for that. Oh, is that too? She you can that play that in creative her, mode. That was her motivation to become an Oh, that's cool. It's like Sims houses or whatever. That's super cool. I like to build a little thing. So I'm like, oh, I can see that as a thing. I like it. I want to be a Saiyan. And that's yeah. why I, I wanted to be a, nin- a ninja. I wanted to be a ninja, folks. I, I'm, I feel like I'm halfway there. I feel like I'm on my way. Do you know I saw the fight the other day in Samurai? Have you watched Samurai Jack? Dude, I've like, we watch a ton of Samurai Jack. I have a funny story about, or an interesting story about that. So my son's been watching it. Uh, Aku's the voice of Uncle in Avatar as well, by the way. I can hear that now. Yep. Oh, um, I never knew that. But yeah, actually, my son is really not to I can't hear that now. Um, watching uh, Samurai Jack as well. Because I showed it to him because I like how slow the pacing is. Mm-hmm. And uh, Tarkovsky, or however you say his last oh, name, Gendy. Yeah. 
Gendy, Gendy he, he, him and the team and whatnot, they mm-hmm. do such a good job of like, like really po- drawing your focus in. Cinematography is yeah, amazing. that's the best. Stop, amazing. I, I've seen so incredible. Many, I've seen so many videos that like break down. I slept on that show for so long too because when we were younger, yeah, I was like, it's got robot yeah. blood. This is yeah. lame, and I thought it was just kind of kitty. And yeah. it has a little kitty element to it, but I, I think that was just kind of so they could put the show on Nickelodeon during prime time. Really for like kids, like it has yeah. a lot of uh, kittiness, but it also has some great action with it too. Have you seen the last season? The one yeah, that season five or that was a good one. He's got hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Spoiler season alert! Five. Spoiler yeah. alert! Okay. Well, so season five came like how many years after? Like fifteen years later. Yeah, like it, and it's actually a higher rating too. Someone was like, "I'm glad we live in the in the universe that they finished Samurai Jack." Yeah, I love it. it. It has a really great, like, a climactic moment right in the beginning, like where oh, true. Yeah, where he ends up fighting those people he thought were robots. No, you call me out for spoiler. I said spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, you said that. they had time to pause it. Yeah. So, uh, saying Sam Jack. Oh, because there's that fight with the ninja that he fights. Yeah, a ninja. that like, was He's good. like a light ninja. Yeah, I thought, that was so scary. Weird. Like you're you're gone and I love that we're in our mid thirties, but we yeah. like Samurai Jack. <laughs> Just like Samurai Jack. We're, we're men, child. But it's it's like the men children. It's, it's the, the action. It's like how well it's like shot and drawn. Is the what audio is. is really good it's, too. Yeah, it's not just a. You notice if he loses a sandal. Yeah, like it'll actually when he walks, click, click, click. Oh, really? Yeah, it'll even be like his one foot will click. So there's a huge attention detail. I mean, this is why like a lot of adults too watch Avatar. You ever you know, watched like, uh, Primal? It's by the same producer or same team. Same team. Uh, it's on last, HBO. Last summer. Yeah, uh, no, not that's Samurai. That's Tom Cruise, baby. Tom Cruise too. But um, <laughs> Samurai Jack. Samurai Jack. Yeah, it's really good. What was that around the same time? No, that came out just a little bit ago, and I think it actually even won a bunch of awards. Oh yeah, that's right. I think you were. It was on Netflix, right? No, HBO. Okay, let me go look that up. Yeah, Primal. So, so You'll getting, know when you're watching I'll it. Get, that is that's a lot same of, like, draw. Teach me to jump good. Yes, that was that was a really good. One. I just like the the banter, like Aku and. In Samurai Jack. Oh yeah. Do you know? You know. Swing your stuff. And I'll fly away. What's uh, Samurai Jack's girlfriend's name? Her voice actually is the same voice who does uh, Azula, mm. I think, in Avatar. Her name is Ashi. Ashi, that's what it is. Ah, that's funny. That's funny. I just good, heard that right. Good right. memory. She looks like a baboon. She looks like a baboon. Yeah, if you see a side profile, the way they drew her. If you if you don't like Samurai, if you don't know what Samurai Jack is, go Samurai Jack. Samurai Jack versus the just watch the show. Remember, that was one of my favorites. Yeah, that was, that's the one I was telling you about. But hold on, no, don't start with that one. Don't start with that one. Cool. Watch the whole series because yeah. it's actually meant to be watched from that's front true. to end. That's true. It actually has like uh, it has a yeah, once long ago in a distant. <laughs> okay, we got to stop. We are going way too long on this. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. And we hope that you got some value out of our nerdiness. If you're a fan of this, this show and you have artistic skills, I would like Samurai Jack doing jiu-jitsu. Ooh, you should get uh, maybe do I some like chat I like seeing Ashi doing a straight foot lock. That'd be yeah. awesome. I like it. Yeah, so we popped around a little bit, but hey, that's pretty normal. If you really hate it that we do that, just let us know in the comments. But please give us five stars so it catches our attention first. Um <laughs> Also, if there's any topics you'd like us to cover, please email us in at the, what is it? Hold on. What's our email? Uh, info at the grappling podcast. Info at the grappling podcast.com. And we're actually going to be a lot more on social media here soon. So you can always just drop something in the DM or shoot us a message on your favorite platform or whatever it is. We are available on Apple podcasts and Spotify. Please rate us on your favorite, you know, listening application. Mm-hmm. And with that, the whole gamut of podcasts i say that specifically because my good friend luke said i was saying a word wrong for many podcasts yeah i said gambit like the gambit throwing cards yeah okay. that's what he said i must be an x-men fan yeah i was like what is it gambit. i thought it was gambit no it's gambit it's a gambit. separate word gambit g-a-m-u-t gamut Gam- gamut 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 interesting gosh, okay gamut. gosh gamut gosh gamut Well, we got to get the gamut out of here. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with a friend. 